Hi, and welcome to the Tobey Tabloid, the place where you can hear all about it. Today, we're dealing with somebody who is a multi-world champion. He was actually born and physically bred to become this particular beast. He is an incredible icon in South Africa. He's world-renowned, actually, aside from being world champion. It is it's a, a true privilege to speak to Safu tonight. Safu, where is Shaolin Martial Arts Center going in the next short while? Well, you know, unfortunately, last year, my uh, father passed away, so... Um, um, we had to make some changes and stuff like that and me and my brother Bruce have decided to take the, the Charlotte Martial Arts Centres to new, new heights and levels and uh, starting off obviously we're trying to educate people what Chinese martial arts is really about and we're trying to get people to understand that they can benefit from a whole variety of ways uh, from uh, self-defense to fitness to stress management to health to flexibility to rehabilitation so there's a whole range of, of things that we're trying to get uh, the public out there to be aware of, of what Chinese martial arts can, can um, provide for them. What I've seen myself having witnessed not only the, the joy of people at the, at the boxing ceremony, but I've seen people's lives change with Kung Fu. And you recommend to Paul that it becomes a way of life. Yes, it is a way of life. It's not a means of learning how to kick, hit and punch. That's just the added bonus. It is a way of life. It, 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 it makes you a better person. It, it makes you realize that you can reach goals that you never thought you were able to reach, to do things that you never thought was possible. Here's a, a situation where you've got all of these schools that are at head office and all of these new faces and new bodies that are going through this program. How did it feel to be a father and, and be in the presence of, of those two glorious little kids of yours, Tyler and Luke, here? And they were just the gems as they arrived. The, the whole uh, room kind of lit up and it must have been hard to keep your stern to full face with, with them around. Um, well, unfortunately, yeah, my dad was very disciplined, uh, very strict and over-disciplined with me, so I think I probably a little bit lacking that fa facet, so I had to uh, obviously um, keep a straight face and, and make sure that there, there's no such a thing as favoritism here. Yeah? One of the reasons why I'm putting them through this one, they're not ready for it, but I'm putting them through this one and, and the next few that we will have over the next few years, is because I want them to grow in confidence. I want them to, to be confident to go up there and do things and, um, and perform and, um, and be good at it, you know. So so they're not forced to do it, but clearly, as you saw, they enjoy being here. Just on the subject of kids, there have been a, a lot of young guys that have come through from Kung Fu and actually experienced the most remarkable transitions of all. How is it that you spot a person who is labelled a problem child and guide them round into the role of leadership and discipline? Well, I don't think I spot them. I think they're drawn to it. I think most of them crave that that discipline, they crave that self-worth, I think it is, you know, they, they're doing it themselves, uh, you know, they've achieved it, they've worked hard to be good at it, and most of them that are problem child, uh, children or labelled as problem children are just children looking for attention and, and, and finding it in the, wrong, in the wrong places. If they get guided into a way we, which is more constructive and more positive, you get remarkable results because they themselves enjoying seeing themselves improve, they don't, I don't think that any of them physically enjoy going backwards, I think they do enjoy going forwards, they do enjoy and take pride in, in improving them themselves. You spoke about results during the boxing ceremony and our final question today is taking guys that have never participated in any kind of championship and getting them to gold medal status, how is that, how did you achieve that? With determination, <laughs> I was determined to to uh, set the record straight because obviously um, there was a lot of politics in the martial arts in this country and because of those politics um, I didn't want to, uh, we didn't want to interfere in politics and we just did our own thing. We kind of uh, let ourselves go in a sense um, from the, the international uh, um, uh, arena from a student point of view so the only people competing internationally and excelling were me and my brother so we were the only two that were representing Shaolin Martial Arts Centre and then when we came back obviously both of us are over the age limit to compete in a lot of these uh, tournaments now so we decided now to hell with it we're gonna we're gonna put together a plan and I, I know our system is strong enough to 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 be better than most of the people out there we've proven it myself and my brother have proven it and uh, yeah I set that I set a three-year goal and I, and I was fortunate enough to to achieve it
wonderful. A privilege to talk to you tonight. Great, Congratulations you on a school that's just growing from strength to strength. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.